Hey, welcome back to the Model 3 Man channel. I know it's in the middle of the Christmas rush and crazy things are happening around, but three exciting things happened in the last two days. The first was that I actually purchased Autopilot. With the end of the Autopilot trial, I bought it. Number two, I had an update to my Tesla app on the phone, which gave new functionality. And thirdly, the release of uh, 2018.39.12.1, I think it is, uh, brought Navigate on Autopilot. Canada has been freed from the geofence. So the ability now to use Navigate on Autopilot has come to us, and in this video, we're gonna test it. This morning it disappeared. I had one day of use, and when I called Tesla, the guys in customer support were amazing. Within one hour, they had it fixed, and they had everything back to normal. So we're taking the car out now on a test. Last night, I got an update, and I have now the 2018.49.12.1. Who remembers those numbers? Anyway, it's the latest. And the big deal is it allows navigate on autopilot here in Canada. The geofence has been removed. We're now able to use navigate on autopilot. And I did a quick test before I came here and I've got co-pilot Jillian helping me now so we can just show you how this actually works. Before we go out, let me just show you a few things that um, came with this release and the previous release. If you pull down the Tesla information panel, you get the Easter eggs. I'm not a gamer, so all of the Atari games and everything are really of no interest to me. I love this one. I think it's the romance egg. This is the one that guys seem to like. And with Jillian sitting in the passenger seat. <laughs> It never fails to raise a laugh. You can send it to the back seat, the driver's seat. You can change the type of emission. That's a ludicrous fart. Let's go for the Falcon Heavy. Or oh, I'm so random. Or what about this one? The newer stink. <laughs> okay, this is pathetic. But it's fun. It is fun. So some of the features in this late release, as well as in the previous releases, navigating on autopilot. It'll recommend auto lane changes. It'll get you into faster lanes if cars are slow. It'll take your exits. It'll move you across lanes in order to get to the point you need to be for an exit. So it's still a beta proposition, but it's, it's working. It's a lot of fun. Uh, keeping the climate control on. So what that involves is that if you're in climate control, you can go here and you can say keep climate control on. And obviously you don't need a hurricane. There we go. But you can keep it on when you're out of the car. You can still adjust your heating independently or you can synchronize them. And then you've just got one heat which you can drag with your finger to change or you can hit the little arrows. So that's cool. We'll synchronize them for now. Bring the temperature down a little. Let's get back to the release notes. So we had the navigate on autopilot, keep climate control on. Mobile app, uh, we can turn the seats on individually. We can turn heating in each of the four seats, five seats in fact, uh, from your app from your home. And there, there is the romance mode where the fire and the logs make such a wonderful um, Christmas scene. Emissions testing is what they, it's a fancy title for the farting app. Pole position, games, I'm not at all interested, so we'll, we'll leave those. But you can enable a pin before anyone can drive your car. So if you've got into the car and you're intent on stealing it, you'll have to enter the pin just like a phone. That's pretty useful. All right, enough talking, let's get on the road and we're going to test out the Navigate on Autopilot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on auto, Navigate on Autopilot while I'm still on this dual lane local road and see if it actually turns off onto the freeway. I'm not sure if it will, but we'll give that a try. That would be a freeway entrance, but the road I'm coming off is a local road. So we'll see how that works. 
I'm going to enable navigate on autopilot now and I'm not in autopilot yet I'll try and do it when we go through these lights because immediately beyond the lights is the entrance to the freeway where we entering the freeway turning right I'm interested to see if I enable autopilot quickly after the lights will it turn in time so here we go there we go hand still on the wheel is it going to turn Signal, that's you? beautiful oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> all right that's why you keep your hands on the wheel it did not turn but we're going to get on the freeway and do this and then it should take the park royal turn off and it definitely should work there so here we are still on navigate and i'm going to oh come on no you look at this car oh. look at this guy Oh my oh. gosh, how not to drive. <laughs> oh my goodness. The world is still filled with people who never learn how to drive and that's why I have to watch every side of Red Dragon for idiots. So here we go, enable, double press down, and there we go. The car centers itself in the lane, I rest a hand on the wheel. It's an 80 zone. I'm setting it to a maximum of 88, which will be traffic dependent. So we're traveling on Route 1, heading west. Um, as you can see, everybody travels a lot faster than the 80. And um, But I'm making a video for YouTube. I should behave myself and do what's right. So here we go. Notice here that the line, it used to be a blue line on each side of the car. No longer. When navigate on autopilot is switched on, it changes to a central blue line within the confines of the lane. So um, that blue circle shows that we're traveling at 88. The maximum on this road is 80. This shows that auto steer is enabled. And if you look at the road ahead, you can see that we're traveling beautifully centered within the lanes. So auto steer is doing a really good job. Now. You can see from the map here that we've got the turn off is um, probably about two and a half kilometers away. Um, I'm going to cut after a while because there's nothing exciting about this short distance here. So let's pick up again as soon as we get near to the turn off. So as you can see from the freeway ahead, there's some traffic slowdown for sure. Uh, we're on navigate on autopilot, which means that in about 900 meters, it should be turning off on the Capilano exit. So I still have a hand on the wheel, but I'm not actually guiding it or steering it. It's just resting to stop it from giving me nag and the prompt all the time. We should be turning off up ahead. Let's see what happens. It indicated by itself. It's slowing down by itself. It's actually done a beautiful turn. It's trying to find the middle of this lane. It's now asking me to take over. Well, it's gone back into regular auto steer. Okay, I'll take over here. The lanes tend to disperse and become very confusing. But that was excellent. It automatically indicated. It took it at the correct speed. I never felt like it was out of control. It, it did the right thing. And now we're going to navigate back to home. So I'm going to cancel quickly and navigate to home. And let's see what happens. Navigate. Navigate on autopilot. Will it take the left turn here? No, it didn't. So we seem to be having a little bit of trouble getting onto the entries to freeways unless I didn't give it enough time that's possible it might have been that I, I waited and I was too close to it um, the exits seem to be perfect um, this time what we're going to do is I'm going to move across to the left lane to see how the car switches lanes to get me into the right lane for turning so let's um, 
turn onto the freeway and return um, in the direction of home. We're trying another on-ramp and uh, right now the car's finding its way. Okay. It certainly did take the on-ramp and it should be steering itself around here. It's doing a not bad job. Okay, that's good. It's accelerating. You can see it picking up speed. It's still stuck on a maximum of 50, um, which should have changed onto the speed of 80. There it is, now it is. And um, Yeah, so it didn't indicate and move me swiftly into the freeway at that point. Um, I'm now going back into autopilot. It's gone into navigate on autopilot because I left that selected. I'm going to go into the left lane and try keeping in the left lane until we get near to our turn off. So once we get past here, I'm going to indicate that didn't look safe. <laughs> Did not look safe. There we go. So there is a reason why you always have to keep your hand on the wheel because you've got to watch out in case other drivers mistake the intentions of autopilot. Autopilot was going to wait until there was a gap. The driver there thought that I was about to barge in front of him and unfortunately if I leave autopilot in control that's what happens. So that has to be worked out but we're in the left lane. Uh, we're going to pick up a little bit of speed here. About two kilometers away, we're going to be turning back across all of the lanes and moving into the off-ramp for Lynn Valley. So we'll just let this see what happens. It comes up with a message on here. It says confirm lane change. What it's requiring you to do is to tap on your indicator in the direction it's suggesting so that it changes for you. So we're now in a lane that should allow us to exit. I'm going to stay in this lane and we'll have a look and see how it it handles the exit to the Lynn Valley off-ramp. Just a little um, tip over here if you point to the steering wheel. If you rest your hand on the side and just put some weight, just the weight of your wrist, you'll notice that you'll never get those nags. It'll never tell you, put your hands in the steering wheel. So even if you just rest it there, the car continues to steer, but it doesn't nag you. So I've got into the habit of using the right side. Sometimes I switch hands and use the left one. The car still turns against the weight of my hand. So here we're coming up. We've got about uh, a less than 900 meters to go. And we do have a turn off. It's my understanding that it doesn't ask me to confirm the turnoff, it just indicates and takes it. So let's see what happens. Here we go with 700 meters. Bit of a traffic slowdown ahead. It's a real day. It's cloudy, it's rainy, it's uh, 3.30 and here in North Vancouver, less than an hour before sundown, but it's a good time to film. So I'm not going to indicate if we go flying past, I guess we can always take the next exit. But I'm just going to leave it and let's see what happens. The navigation shows the turn. Let's see what actually happens. It's indicating. It's taking the off ramp and it's slowing down. Look at that. 50, 40. Beautiful. Taking the curve at the speed I would actually a little slower, but that's good. And now it doesn't know whether I want to go straight or I want to go right. So it's going to go back into regular autopilot. There we go. And I'm going to indicate and take over. And one more thing to show you here while we're testing autopilot is here we are on what is essentially a local road. Um, no problem. The autopilot auto steer icon appears. I'm going to double tap and let it go. Now you'll notice we're coming up to some red lights. Of course, because the fact that there is a car in front of us, it will slow down, and it is. It'll come to a complete standstill. 
I promise you, if the car was not here, it would blow right through the red lights. So you, you really have to be very careful. I don't mind testing it on local roads where, where they're a dual carriage anyway. Interesting thing, I'm accelerating now. I'm putting my foot on the accelerator because I don't like the slow way it starts up. Now I'm gonna take my foot off. Notice here, it's kept in auto steer and it's kept in uh, traffic aware cruise control. So you are able to put your foot in the accelerator, accelerate a little and then step back, release it. The car continues in the uh, mode that you have it. So we'll try that again at the next set of lights. It's doing a really, really good job. Oh, the car is moving and there's an obstacle ahead. Now this is dangerous, so let's see what it actually does. Dad, you should change lanes. Uh, it's slowing down, great. It's actually slowing down. And it's coming to a complete stop. I gotta wait for all the cars to go. And then I'm gonna go left brake out of auto steer. Notice that cruise control is still active. Traffic aware cruise, still there. So I double tap down. It won't let me go right now. But once it does allow me, I can go back into auto steer. It's watching the car ahead, but the lights it's not even recognizing. Um, Elon has promised that in a soon to be released update, it will take notice of traffic lights and of stop lights. That will be a great thing to test. So when we get that update, I'll be the first to test it and I'll post it on my channel. It's slowing down beautifully and it seems to me that all of the simulated vehicles on each side are very much more accurate now in terms of whether they're SUVs, whether they're cars, whether they're trucks or, or buses. Um, they also seem to be a little bit more stable. They tend to jump around, and I know that's because of the sensors, but nevertheless, uh, I'm gonna accelerate now. The car takes a little too long, in my opinion. As we get in behind him, I'm gonna release the accelerator, which I have done, and now it goes with the flow. So don't, don't be afraid to just push your foot in the accelerator and then move it out again. The car resumes its normal behavior on full auto steer traffic aware cruise control. I'd just like to wish you all a very happy Christmas and uh, a great new year. Look after yourself and stay safe. Times get crazy. And if anyone is in the middle of purchasing a new Tesla, please feel free to use my referral code, which will be down below in the description. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.